Hello there, I'm Dan, and welcome to another video on RetroTech. This time, we're going to be looking at a questionably legal SNES cartridge from China. So, to give you a bit of context about why I have this cartridge in the first place, about a year ago, I found this Super Nintendo at a local market for £2. It wasn't in the greatest condition, so I took some time to clean it up, and this is what we see today. But, the main problem was I didn't have any games to test the console. I wanted to get an EverDrive, something that I could load ROMs onto and play some of my old favourites, but they're quite costly and I didn't want the risk of spending that much money just to find out the console was broken. I could have bought a couple of cartridges off eBay, but by the time I found the games that I wanted to play, it would still be relatively expensive. So, I had a look on AliExpress and found this region-free Super 800-in-1 Pro SNES cartridge with an 8GB memory card apparently preloaded with, you guessed it, 800 games. So, let's take a look at whether this is a good alternative to the EverDrive and see if it was worth the £25 that I paid for it. I've got the Super Nintendo plugged into this 26-inch Panasonic Vieira LCD TV that I picked up for free from my neighbour. I would use the 28-inch Sony Vega, Vega... Wega CRT TV for this, but I currently don't have a camera that has a manual adjustable shutter speed. Anyways, right off the bat, once you inserted the cartridge into the console and switched it on, you were greeted with a menu with various options. You've got Start Game, Select Game, Options, ROM Settings, and Toolbox. Now, the first thing you probably want to do is go to Select Game, but before we get into that, I just want to show you what the other options are. If you go to Options, you have two options, Reset, Return, and Autosave. These are toggled on by default and are self-explanatory. ROM settings show you the current ROM that is loaded onto the cartridge. As you can see here, it is Super Mario World. Toolbox shows you further options such as Save or Load SRAM, Device Info, Update OS, and About. Now, if we go back to Select Game, we are presented with the home directory of the SD card and various folders that can be accessed. As you can see, they are divided into USA, NTSC, Europe, PAL, and Japan, which is also NTSC. There are also a couple more files on the home directory, with a spreadsheet list of the games, Donkey Kong Country, and Zelda linked to the past. Let's delve into a couple of folders and see what games there are. Are there really 800? Browsing through them on the SNES, you can see that there are a ton of them, with some of my favourites including The Addams Family, Aladdin, Donkey Kong, Final Fantasy, Street Fighter, Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario World, and Super Metroid. Taking the SD card out and putting it into my Mac, the spreadsheet lists 700-ish games, so not the 800 they claim. Secondly, there are duplicates. Whilst I haven't gone in-depth, I can hazard a guess and say there are around 300 unique games. Now, what's it like to actually play with the cartridge? Let's select a game that isn't currently loaded onto the cartridge, The Addams Family. Once you've navigated to the file and selected it, you're greeted with a screen that details what is going on. It is wiping the previous game from memory and loading in a new one. This process may take a couple of minutes, so hang tight. Once we're in the game, it sounds and plays like normal. There are no obvious lags or drops in frame rate, and it feels like a normal cartridge. If you're fed up with playing the game, but want to come back to it later, all you have to do is switch off the console, switch it back on, select start game, and it'll load like a normal cartridge.
Want to play another game? It's as easy as switching the console off and on, navigate into the game you want, select it, wait for it to load and you're good to go. Let's have a look at Super Mario World. Okay, that's enough Super Mario. What about Street Fighter? My go-to fighter back in the day was always Blanco. So that's what we'll choose today. Finally, let's have a quick look at Donkey Kong Country, which has been difficult to emulate in the past. It runs well. As you can see, the cartridge runs well and any game I select has worked, however, there are some limitations that need to be discussed. Firstly, this cartridge won't play any games that uses special enhancement chips such as Super FX and, because of that, the games aren't preloaded onto the SD card. Games like Super Mario Kart, Super Mario RPG and Yoshi's Island won't run on this car. Even Doom, and Doom can run on just about anything. Secondly, depending on the size of the game, it can take quite a while to load the game into flash memory, as can be seen with the demonstration here with Donkey Kong Country.
Finally, the legality of it all. I just want to preface this and say that I am not a lawyer and this should not be taken as legal advice. I am also based in the UK and other countries may have their own specific laws. With that being said, the cartridge is legal to use, just like the Super Everdrive. It's what's on the SD card that is a little shady. In the UK, it is legal to make a backup copy of software that you legally own. However, it has to be a necessary backup. You could argue that as the contacts, chips and battery degrade on the cartridge, backing it up to preserve the data is necessary. However, I don't know if this covers downloading a ROM of a game you actually own. Furthermore, I know it is illegal to download a ROM when you don't own the physical game. It is also illegal to share copies of the ROM, whether you own the physical media or not. However, these ROMs have not been downloaded by myself. They were provided to me by the seller on AliExpress. I also have absolutely no intention of sharing these ROMs, as all I want to do is to play them on my Super Nintendo. Whilst I can't compare it to an EverDrive, as I don't have one, it seems to do the trick for me. Having looked at other reviews of the EverDrive, I can see that it does load games faster and has a nicer interface. However, for this cartridge being a third of the price of the EverDrive, and also supplying enough ROMs to satiate your appetite for some 16-bit goodness, it is good enough for me. The only thing I think this cartridge is missing is save states. When emulating using software, save states makes it easy to jump straight back into the game, but not having it on the console makes me feel like I'm in the middle ages. But I guess that gives us a more authentic experience. Anyways, what do you think? Would this be something you're interested in buying? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to watch more content like this and about other retro tech, tech reviews, repairs and DIY projects, be sure to check out my channel and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Retrotech. And as always, thanks for watching.